Five days a week is back. Football is on the way. On today's show, we play some pretty tricky keep trade cut as we take a look at players going in similar ranges, similar teams. Andy is back. That's great news. Jay Grizz is gone. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you click like and enjoy the show. Hey, Foot Clan, are you hungering for something new this summer? Mm hmm. HelloFresh has got your back with pre-measured ingredients and easy-to-follow directions. Your new favorite meal can be prepped in under 30 minutes. Get up to 14 free meals, including free shipping, when you use the code FOOTBALLERS14 at HelloFresh.com slash FOOTBALLERS14. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Oh. <laughs> it's ballers time. Yeah. yeah. So excited to be back. August has arrived. It's Monday. The nasty shimmy is here. Oh, bitch, damn it. <laughs> Let's go. I am so excited for this August show. It's literally fantasy it's football go time. time. Yes. yes. Oh, my goodness. August 2nd. Welcome to the party. Keep trade cut today. NFL news to talk about. Training camps are happening. There's a football game on Thursday. What? <laughs> I mean, Sort of. It's the Hall of Fame game. That's but, fine. But it's technically a, a football game. They put it there because they know we'll watch. Mm -hmm. I they, mean, we know what you get to say on Thursday, that's, Mike. This so, is true. Yes. Oh, I'm excited. We have a show each and every day this week, and that will be the case through the end of December. So very excited. If you're brand new to the fantasy footballers, welcome in. It's going to be a fun year. We're going to help you. Uh, sit atop your league proudly, trophy in hand. Mm -hmm. Have the most fun doing it. And uh, you can find us on Twitter, at the FF Ballers. We'll let you know what's going on around here. You can find us on YouTube. Subscribe, click the bell. That's YouTube.com slash The Fantasy Footballers. Oh, so you already gave us a big shimmy. He did. I sure did. Okay. It, it so that was, was to kick off the year. It was large. Yeah. I mean, I shimmed left. And I shimmed right. I did tune in. Thank you for uh, holding down the fort. Uh, I'm course. speaking to Jay Grizz, not you guys. Yeah, no, yeah, he's good. Uh, but uh, I had a nice uh, 15th anniversary trip with the wife right before things got crazy with the season. I did tune in to some of the episodes I missed. Uh, I understand you have another nickname. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just the nicknames don't stop for no. big, big Nasty, Big Nick shit. Nasty. Uh, I mean, call me whatever you want. Uh, but it was it was great. It was great to listen to those and excited to be back. Well, we have a big announcement. <laughs> you don't even I say don't, you do the Jared Goff. And I don't even know what that voice is. That voice is just you're a, what you think a court of like yeah, I a guess king and queen. That's really what it is. The, the announcement guy would be like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but it's got a hint is that of from the Mr. Jared Rogers. Gerf. Uh, yeah. because it, because that is the Jared Garf yes. horn, yeah. um, it's the Jared Garf voice introducing a big announcement. Yeah. And here it is. There's it a is. huge announcement. Why don't you take it away, Jason? Look, people ask all the time, how do I get in a league with you guys? And the answer is usually you can't, and you never will. But right now, <laughs> <laughs> unless you join the Listener League, and the Listener League submissions are now open. So here's how you do it, and then these two gentlemen will explain what you do. You're going to send your submission to Listener League at FantasyFootballers.com. Let me say that only one more time. Listener League, singular, at FantasyFootballers, plural, dot com. That's it. Send mm -hmm. your submission. We're going to look at the thousand submissions that come in. Yeah, and what do they look like, guys? Yeah, we get a wide range of submissions, and we we just want something. Wait, 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 wait! What do we want them to look like, guys? <laughs> That's a good point. We don't. Here's what we don't want, and we say this every year: we don't need the lifetime achievement resume, every league you've ever won, huge giant novel of a paragraph for us to read through about why you think you're deserving. 
Yeah, if you write like this really nice story about why you deserve to be in, uh, we won't read. We're it. not gonna read it. Yeah, I'm looking for that attachment, bro. <laughs> like, so we straight just up. generally we say do something to impress, surprise us. Um, a lot of people don't know this, Brooks. We got connected with Brooks six plus years ago now because of a listener league submission. He's now the producer of the show. Uh, he sent in a, an amazing video where he kind of, you know, uh, turned a table over and we could tell he was passionate about the show. And fun. Yeah, we, we want to have fun. fun people. And yeah. uh, the biggest loser, Brian Ketron, we yeah. connected through the Listener League. We, we've we got great relationships with a lot of the people from Listener Leagues in the past. So it, it's a blast. Show us what your something talents, unique. your skills, your personality, something unique. And... Uh, May the best man or woman win. Yeah, and uh, that that email address that Jason was kind enough to give twice. If you ask for it on socials, you're you're going to get a fake email address given to you. Ooh, oh, that's a good idea. Nice. Like, like, Although kind of heartbreaking if somebody produces something and sends it to that. Yeah, we we, we gave you the rules, yeah. man. You Listen just heard right it. now. You just heard it. It was uh, just rewind. Uh, so that's happening. Accepting entries for one week. Then we're going to pick all the listener league winners. Uh, the Megalo Bowl is coming up too at the end of the month, and that the winner of the Megalo Bowl gets into the Listener League for the next year. Mm -hmm. So last year's Megalo Bowl winner is in already. So we do have a limited amount of spots. Yeah, for the people like if you want, you think you could get in because you're so great at fantasy football. That's your chance. Go win the Megalo Bowl. Yeah, and um, you know, there's only a few people that we pick every year to lose to us in that league. Mm -hmm. That's right. And That's so true. we're very excited to, to select some of you. All right, ultimatedraftkit.com for the draft kit. Let's talk news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. I am so excited. I just realized how hyped I am for the year. I've been watching camp videos. People, sp It doesn't matter what it is. Tim Tebow looks too big for his He's body. Gigantic. I mean, this looks like some superhero took a, He's, yeah, he works a magic out a pill. Well, he definitely looks more like a tight end now than he ever had before. They may have to move him straight through the tight end position to O-lineman. Yeah, I was going to say, he looks a lot bigger than, than a tight end. But that's not news. That's just some of the fun camp hype that is going on everywhere, and we'll be talking about it, sifting through it, telling you what to pay attention to, what's pretend. Let's start here with news, though. Nick Chubb. Congratulations. He's such a great professional. He's so good. Three-year, $36.6 million contract extension with $20 million guaranteed. Nick Chubb is so interesting for fantasy football, and I saw a lot of takes on this because he was in the news and um, a lot of well-respected people talking about the fact that Nick Chubb can never be a league winner. I mean, that was, yeah, the, did, yeah. that was yeah. the opinion because of, you, know, you have Kareem Hunt that spells him on passing downs. He's never going to be a big pass catcher, and therefore he can never be a league winner. Do you agree with that? I, I, I actually do agree with that, assuming that Kareem Hunt is active and playing. If he goes down and, and Chubb were to get the entire workload, he, he he definitely could. But so could Kareem Hunt in the reverse. As far as with both of those guys there, I think Chubb is excellent, is a worthy draft pick. Um, but I don't think he is a, a league winner. Um, he's basically Derrick Henry light. And Derrick Henry is on that cusp where even though he's been top three, you know, if you actually look at the... Uh, you know, like best ball has end of year statistics of uh, the results of wins and losses based on players uh, hasn't been as great because you don't have uh, the pass catching the game script uh, game script proof uh, part of you. I love Nick Chubb. I think he's better for the NFL than for fantasy, but I'm also the lowest out of the three of us. I, well, assume I mean, what if you put Kareem Hunt on the Titans and then ask what Derrick Henry is exactly. at that point? Exactly. And I think he's very much the same. Like it, to me, if you think Derrick Henry is a league-winning running back, you should think that Nick Chubb can as well. I that's you, a that's a very subjective term, obviously. So sure. you're right. I mean, yeah. league-winning. What does that mean? I think Nick Chubb does enough for your team to be a foundational RB one. Yes, and I I think Nick Chubb is a first-round running back. Uh, I have him projected very high this year. Uh, the Cleveland Browns are a tremendous team like they have a really excellent offense you ha are they're heading into the second year so Baker Mayfield is going to be even more comfortable uh running the Stefanski offense you saw it in the second half when Baker Mayfield it was rough at the beginning then they really got it going and a reminder this was a double digit win team but 
They were also third place in their own division, meaning they play a third place schedule. They will be out there just playing against very inferior opponents a lot. And I think that this could be a year where yeah, you're very high on Nick Chubb, uh, where you have a an outlier touchdown season for Nick Chubb. Well, here, here's some just to put a bow on it. Twelve touchdowns last year, missed some games. That's what Nick Chubb had. Yeah, Kareem Hunt scored eleven times. Yeah. So that I mean that's kind of wild when you look at that situation. Eleven touchdowns go to another running back on that roster. All right, couple mediocre signings of the week: Devonta Freeman, Alfred Morris. Freeman goes to the Saints, Alfred Morris to the Giants, depth signings for those teams. The big news that broke, I mean, Carson Wentz. Uh, yeah. This was monstrous news that broke. Saturday show um, talked about it out indefinitely right now. The latest on Carson Wentz is he's going to try, he's, he's playing a little game in a way where he's going to take a test and see if his foot recovers and he can rehab it before going into surgery. So... Basically, can I play through this pain if it recovers a little bit or not? What do you think is going to happen, and how does that impact, um, you know, the rest of these players? Because obviously, if your offense isn't moving the football, that hurts everybody. Yeah, I think he's going to have surgery in about two weeks. That's <laughs> that's what I think. Yeah. Um, not a doctor, obviously. The rest approach is the only way that he can be there for week one is to avoid the surgery and play through it. If he does, I think you're going to have a less mobile version, and you're going to be unhappy. And if he does have the surgery, you're probably looking at about a week six return uh, to action. So he's off your redraft draft boards and irrelevant for the first half of uh, your season for Dynasty. It's, it's just bad news for Carson Wentz. I think the question is, what happens for the hopeful upside guys like Pittman? Yeah, it hurts. I mean, it hurts the upside if you have an unproven quarterback on any team. So if Wentz isn't out there, then you're leaning on – uh, what Jacob Eason? Yeah, and easing on down the road. Yeah, easing on down the rankings, maybe uh, <laughs> for, for these players. Uh, just you know. throw it to Mohali Cox; he's huge. <laughs> well, and I just think put it up there. I don't. I don't know what you guys talked about. I don't know how much news was out on the Saturday show that it was. It was very brief. So Jacob Eason is a dynasty pickup. Yes, one hundred. Because they have a great offensive line, a great head coach, and. Like you said, Jason, if he ends up having surgery, there's no guarantee that it's six week return, that he's fine. Yeah, he's a fourth round draft pick. This isn't some seventh round undrafted uh, fodder. So yeah. you, you, there's a chance he could come in and, and impress. Yeah, I, I don't think uh, anybody thinks Jacoby Brissett is a franchise quarterback, but he had some games in that offense when he's had to fill in. Uh, they also signed Brett Hundley. So if you know where their chips are being pushed, yep. they're at least uh, preparing for the worst with Wentz. Um, Devonta Smith, Eagles first round wide receiver. The injuries with Philadelphia, they just pi they've just they been piling up every single year. He's going to miss two to three weeks, has a sprained MCL. They were worried. He underwent an MRI, and they said that they were worried about a season-ending type of injury. Uh, so this was good news, but a sprained MCL – First year in the league, first it's, time with a new quarterback. You have now, I don't know, you just have more question marks around him. Well, and you're not going to see him in preseason, so he's going to start plummeting in draft boards. We always say, or at least I do, when a player is injured during your draft, don't buy the injury dip. Just grab healthy guys. Um, I think the hope here is that he turns into an Odell Beckham type of rookie season where you started injured and you come back and you're a superstar. But outside of that... It's bad news to miss well, you, camp, miss preseason. Yeah. You might not even see him in the regular season, just physically. You might not be able to see him. He's very tiny, very skinny. Yeah, well, like when he turns <laughs> sideways, you mean? That's what right? I mean, He just yeah. disappears? It's the envelope uh, post. Paper route. Mario type of. Paper, Paper Mario. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> okay. He just slips uh, into 2D. Oh, <laughs> no. Because I know what that means because that's too good of a nickname. Uh, so Paper Mario's out for two to three weeks. Uh, Hollywood Brown, hamstring injury, worse than originally thought, according to head coach John Harbaugh. Oh, it's Rashad Bateman time. Nope. Oh, he's, wait a minute. He's sidelined. Uh, with, with what? Well, I mean, the, the report was muscle <laughs> toughness, but I think they meant tightness. That was the funniest thing. <laughs> I've never been sidelined for muscle toughness. It was That's straight up sure. withstanding victories. It's like, oh, I could, I always love when my muscles are tough. A little too tough. 
If you ask me. His muscles were so tough. I mean, honestly, if he's being held out for muscle toughness, you have to assume it's a lack thereof, right? Like, your muscles are too weak. Get, no, get to it's the like a well-done steak. It's a little yes. too... Or too, he's too, the Hulk and he's hurting people. Mm. So here, here's the... So it's the Lizard King <laughs> time. I was going to say, have you, have you talked about not, the Lizard King at all? Not much. Um, no. <laughs> we got to get that updated with the right jersey there, Brooksy. Put that on the list. Uh, the Lizard King is getting a lot of hype. Sammy Watkins is yes. his name. He is the Lizard <laughs> King because he genuinely believes he is a lizard person. Right. This is a fair uh, <laughs> nickname. Um, but he's getting a lot of hype. They, the team has said that he's – they've come out with the hyperbole, the hype train, the one of the best in the league wide receiver uh, hyperbole. They said he, he's the best guy in camp. He's the best guy in OTAs. And now all of his competition is is hurt. Miles Boykin's not getting any work in this offense. That was reported. Is there – I mean, what – just stay away. Mark, Mark Andrews, Andrews and week one Sammy Watkins. I, I can oh, take both, yeah. both of those things. He does love week one. He does. Then trade high. My goodness. All right. Uh, that, that was today's news and notes presented, as always, by Sleeper. Uh, they are by far the largest dynasty platform, so you can get a dynasty league going over there, customizable – um, definitely check that out. Oh, I'm so excited for this yes, season. Soon. Why why wasn't uh AJ Green at the top of the news? How great he is. is He's that? probably on the show tomorrow, would be my guess. Oh, is he? That'd be I mean, because that's a that's a real high train about, smoke fire. Oh, okay. All right. I thought you meant mid round madness. I'm like, he ain't going oh. in the middle <laughs> rounds. <laughs> why? What, what are you doing? What happened? Apologies. I'm I'm You're rusty I'm over rusty. There. Uh that was uh not this button. Keep trade cut. Are you what where's your since I pushed the button, Jason, where is your current Jalen Hurts like thermometer reading. Wow, the timing on that question. I spent, uh, I, I was a couple minutes late this morning. Part of the reason why is because I spent a, uh, like 30 minutes deep diving Jalen Hurts in camp so far. Uh, read a bunch of reports and he's been uh, inconsistent. Moments of greatness and then moments of inaccuracy. Uh, my my Jalen Hurts take right now is warm, not hot. If you lose uh, Devontae yeah, Smith that yeah, sucks. That sucks. and you are but you gain Zach Ertz back at camp and you lose gaining Zach Ertz <laughs> back as one of the guys you have to throw the ball to I, I I don't think he has great weapons it is comforting in the deep dive to see that there are um packages for him to run uh they he has been running as you know yeah planned yeah, scripted runs because there was some there was some question about that early in the offseason with the new head coach coming in whether they were going to play to the quarterback strength or not and it seems they are so that's good but um the weapons are not inspiring yeah I mean the one thing that I will always give Jalen Hurts credit for is I think he is a natural born leader for the position like I think he has the mental makeup of one of the elite type of but there there have been quarterbacks like that that haven't gotten over the physical play hump mm -hmm. like Colt McCoy is an example where well respected around the league never got that job I think Jalen Hurts is going to be put into a position to succeed I just hope he has Devonta Smith and and uh company and he will weapons. eventually yeah all right that was uh now we're in the introduction trade to keep trade cut <laughs> oh man Monday morning um so we are going to go through a number of these let's start with third round wide receivers keep trade cut Keenan Allen Terry McLaurin and Allen Robinson all going in the third round. Allen is going the highest at 306, McLaurin at 307, Allen Robinson at 311. Um, difficult decision here. Extremely. And it's making me and if you go evaluate my, my project. My, the projections are not in front of me. The rankings, though. I have Keenan Allen at 7, Allen Robinson at 9, and Terry McLaurin at 12. And this is... I guess that you know there's some team makeup decisions when you're drafting these wide receivers. I feel like my keep is Terry McLaurin uh, because in the third round I want not only a player; th these are all safe players to me. Like I'm, I'm not, I'm not concerned that 
One of them is going to bust right now. But as far as getting into the top five, I mean, I don't but know see, that Keenan a, Allen can get there, and I don't know that Allen Robinson can get there. That's an okay way to look at it, in my opinion, because there's two scenarios here. This could be the, the wide receiver one if you went running back, running back to start the right. draft. And if you're looking for pure upside, like you said, we've seen Keenan Allen. He's an elite player. Um, you have him ranked higher than Terry McLaurin. But I know that like a lot of people have McLaurin locked in as an auto pick in the third round. Well, I, if you're looking at a guy who could finish as you know a top three wide receiver, I, I Keenan Allen and Allen Robinson are very very safe. The targets are going to be there. You're talking over 140 targets, over 150 targets. That that's that's probable, not just in the range of outcomes. That's like the assumption, and so. I having think that those should be guys, the assumption for Terry as well, though. I, but it, I don't think it is because we haven't really seen him be a long-term, multi-year target hog. You know with Keenan Allen and Allen Robinson, every single year there are 150 targets. So the, the safety's on their side, but I don't know that they have the athleticism at this point in their career to truly go ham and over the course of the season take four or five 70-yard uh, touchdowns the way that Terry McLaurin can. So when you're on the clock... I get that. Like, I have Allen Robinson as my highest-ranked guy here, and I think that I would probably be willing to draft him, but I want to draft Terry McLaurin yeah. because of the upside. Um, I think that the that he is the riskiest of the three. Um, I will, I'm going to keep Keenan Allen here. Just to keep the safe. The I'm going to keep Keenan. Well, it, it's it's about quarterback as well. It's about the knowledge that I have of who's leading that offense throughout the year. I love the offensive line improvements. I was watching some camp video of Justin Herbert that was getting me hot and bothered. I mean, that kid is so talented. With McLaurin. The hair is back, too. <laughs> thank goodness. Thank yeah. goodness. Yeah, Samson situation yeah. there. Um, the shoe dropped after that. After the hair <laughs> dropped, the shoe dropped. Uh, but Terry McLaurin offers a lot of upside. But like Jason said, I mean, you haven't seen a fantasy finish there yet. You've seen stretches where if you – mapped it out over the year, he would be there, no question. But you don't know. I mean, right now, I don't know if you guys talked about it on the Saturday show. I mean, Washington said that they're, it's an open competition between Heineke and, and Fitzpatrick. That feels like very much a wink-wink open competition. Even if it's not, Ryan Fitzpatrick hasn't played a complete season in a long, long time. True. And then with Chicago, there will be either a transition or there will be a rookie quarterback. So with that knowledge, if I'm – the best guarantee is who I'll go with. So I'll keep Keenan Allen. I'll definitely trade Terry McLaurin because the hype is ex extensive appropriately, and then I'll cut Allen Robinson. Yeah, I, I love all three of these players. I'm going to keep Allen Robinson um, because even though his quarterback play is a little bit questionable, his quarterback play has literally always in, been yeah. questionable. He might have the has best he, quarterback he's ever played with right has now. Has he ever finished ahead of Keenan, though? Has he in like ever, the last like five years? Uh, fantasy finish wise, I mean, I think he out he finished higher than he than Keenan last year, didn't he? I mean, we're talking about back to back top twelve, yeah, wide receiver seasons for Allen Robinson. Uh, I believe two years ago he was the wide receiver eleven. Last year he was the wide receiver twelve. Uh, so I'm going to keep Allen Robinson the known target volume. Um, okay. I'm going to trade like you, Terry McLaurin, to Mike. Because the hype to Mike. <laughs> I'm going to get a lot for Terry, and I'll cut. Uh, Keenan Allen, but don't hear what I'm not saying. I think Keenan. Well, they're all great. third round wide receivers for a reason. I'm gonna keep. I'm gonna go with Terry McLaurin. The do you? Where's your confidence level in Keenan Allen having another season with eight plus touchdowns? I think it's. Mm. I think it's in the cards. Because that's that's where he was. I mean, and you had back with. We haven't seen Keenan Allen hit that mark since his rookie year, where yeah. he was playing with Philip Rivers, and. Was that just an? Was this the outlier season in terms of touchdowns for Keenan Allen? Meanwhile, like Mike Williams, who who should have had way more touchdowns last year, wasn't coming down with him. I think it's just looking at the body of work, whether it's touchdowns or not. Number three, number twelve, number eight, number fourteen for Keenan Allen. So, it, I get it. I feel like maybe Terry McLaurin is in a position where, like, <laughs> is it possible he's being set up only to disappoint fantasy players? It is possible. Because if he doesn't come out and do the explosive things that we hope for, I mean, it's going to be a huge disappointment. I think everybody's, like, banking on it. Yeah, if he finishes as the wide receiver 15, right. that's 
That's not going to be the that, year. That's that, going to feel bad. That's going to feel like, dang it, he didn't do what I drafted him to do. I mean, just remember what. Like DJ Moore last year? Yeah, but but remember what Terry McLaurin, if you talk about bad quarterback play, through week 12, he was averaging over 87 yards a game with Dwayne Haskins, with Alex Smith, with, I mean, with re not just bad, really bad quarterback play. And then at the end of the year, my man was out there on two sprained ankles. Oh, I I know the case. So I, I I'm in, man. I'm I'm buying in. Okay. That so who are you who are you trade? Uh, I'll trade Keenan Allen. Okay. I think that people are people are more apt to draft Keenan than Allen. Wait, Robinson. Yeah, Allen Robinson. Wow, I, I was confused that. there. <laughs> 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 they liked his first name, but they do not like his last name. <laughs> Get that surname out of here. Um, look, we're going to talk about the Broncos, uh, next, which I think is fascinating before we do. Can't wait. Uh, I, oh man, you're going to eat my soul today, aren't you? Um, <laughs> yes. but before we get there, I want to thank today's sponsors. Indochino is a longtime sponsor and a wonderful option. Hey, look, when we, when we get the right outfit on, it brings out the best in us. We feel our best. You want to look your best and be more comfortable than you think in an awesome suit. Indochino is the way to go. This is I, I am speaking from experience. It's not always the easiest thing to get a uh, perfectly tailored uh, shirt, suit, pants, everything. And it's super easy with Indochino. And, uh, you know, I personally went down to the showroom. They had an expert just. I felt like I was in Harry Potter, just getting measured. And then they send me this perfectly tailored suit. It looks better than any suit you could buy off the rack. Uh, it's it's so affordable compared to most super expensive. I mean, you're talking suits start at just $399. That's including all the customizations for a custom-made tailored suit with every detail. It is absolutely phenomenal, and you'll love it. And right now, they're open at select Nordstrom stores, so you can have even more ways to get into a great fitting, personalized clothing. Go to your nearest uh, location. You can find that at Indochino.com. And right now you can get $50 off any purchase of $3.99 or more using the code FOOTBALLERS at checkout. That's $50 off a purchase of $3.99 or more at Indochino, I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com, promo code FOOTBALLERS. And we'd like to thank Headspace for sponsoring today's show. If mental health is... Uh, part of your self-care plan this year, you owe it to yourself to try Headspace. It's a daily dose of mindfulness in the form of guided meditations in an easy-to-use app. Headspace meditations start at just one minute each. They even have a set of walking meditations. You can fit it in even with the busiest of schedules. All three of us have a Headspace account. I have been getting, I've been practicing more and more on the meditation, trying to bring that down. I have a I've had anxiety my whole life, and you know sometimes it gets out of control, and I realize, oh, I'm not taking care of myself. I'm not taking care of my body. I'm not taking care of my brain, and Headspace can really help you do that. Headspace is backed by 25 published studies on its benefits, 600,000 five-star reviews, over 60 million downloads. Give them a try. You deserve to feel happier, and Headspace is meditation made simple. Go to headspace.com slash footballers. That's headspace.com slash footballers, and you're going to get a free one-month trial with access to Headspace, full library of meditations for every situation. This is the best deal offered right now, headspace.com slash footballers. Breaking news. Oh, I suppose it is that time of year. Oh, well, that was fast. Carson Wentz will have surgery to repair his foot. <sighs> He's out up to 12 weeks. <sighs> There you go. Uh, but I guess I was less. wrong on my one to two weeks before he gets surgery. I am like we we are going to be in the thick of it. You know the the ultimate draft kit. We update our rankings all the time. I'm going to be doing a full audit later today across these teams with camp reports with these injuries accounted for. Like I am going to lower um, Jonathan Taylor. Like he is yep. he is not going to be not being attached to an offense with an established quarterback and the variables therein. Um, I, he is going to be dropping down my rankings a little bit. I feel more confident with Ezekiel Elliott at this point than Jonathan Taylor with Carson Wentz missing time. And so those changes will go into effect very soon. It's disappointing. I wanted to see what would happen there, but here we have another injury. Michael Pittman was... Yeah, you were starting to... Michael Pittman was on the board 
of our uh, it, on the whiteboard, we'd write down like temporary names of these are guys that we are looking at to be my guys. Michael Pittman was on the board for me. I was drafting him everywhere. This is extremely disappointing for his upside. Not not that I think Carson Wentz is the best quarterback in the world, but he's at this point of his career, he's a better option than uh, than Eason or I mean. God forbid Brett Hundley wins that job out from underneath Eason. And, uh, well, Eagles, you're not going to get your first-round pick. Yeah, that's out the window. <laughs> Sorry. Unfortunate that another injury, oh. another injury to Carson Wentz hurts the Eagles. Wow. <laughs> I mean, he just he, can't stop he, hurting he them. He can't stop hurting the Eagles. Goodness. Oh. All right, our next keep trade cut. Broncos receiving options that were, quote, drafted to be great. Okay, so we're talking about Cortland Sutton in the sixth round, Jerry Judy in the eighth round, Noah Fant in the seventh round. Who was drafted to be greatest, though? Uh, I, think I think that's a good – I thought think, it was Fant. I would think <sighs> Jerry Judy. That's kind of where I lean, but, Ooh, Fant, so but they Fant, were all drafted to be great. Fant was 20th. Okay, I was thinking of Hawkinson. Hawkinson was top 10. Jerry Judy was 15th. So he is the highest drafted player of this bunch. Yeah, so difficult decisions to be made here. Uh, the last I was reading about Broncos camp is that neither quarterback had done enough to separate at this point. That Bridge It sounds like the edge is for Drew Locke, though, from the beat reporters I am following. Okay, Bridgewater's uh, been a little bit more accurate from what I understand. Yeah, I was going to say we, we are following different guys because I thought the edge is, is going towards Bridgewater. Probably who, means it's right down the middle. Yeah, <laughs> last I saw was, you know, had like two incompletions. and So, uh, yeah, you can <laughs> – Look, we, Chad Haney has proved that you can complete almost all your passes. Teddy so, Bridgewater loves to throw completable or no, uh, passes. Uh, Pennington, Pennington, that's one. Completable yeah. passes Pennington right made, next to him. Pass. So he, here's the story before we keep trade cut it. Cortland Sutton's going in the back of the sixth round. The, knees, the, the recent reports on the knee is that he hasn't been able to open it up yet. He had a great season two years ago, but again, he was not good with Drew Locke in that season. He missed a year. Three games. Um, and then we, we – we have him coming back. Jerry Judy's in the eighth round. Second year in the offense as a professional. Also, he was number two behind A.J. Green on the quantity of uncatchable passes last year. And then Noah Fant, who is going into year three. You've got that narrative, tight ends, it takes a little while. The Athletic reporting that uh, Nick uh, Noah Fant's role in the Denver offense is evolving to include a wider, vari wider variety of routes. He's going to be valuable to this offense, Jason. And then, um, so that's the that's the scenario. And he's in the seventh round. So lots to think about here. What's interesting is that generally when you have two wide receivers and tight end and a tight end drafted in the uh, first eight rounds of an NFL draft, normally one of those guys goes early in fantasy. All these guys are in the sixth round or later. So I think there's a lot of indecision with Denver. There's nobody's putting all of their chips into one basket, but the likelihood that one of these guys has a really nice year and therefore is a draft value is very high. Yeah, I mean, you you want nebulous situations. You want um, a, 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 a receiving core like this where you don't know exactly where it's going to come from. Obviously, the reason they're all nerfed in value is because of the quarterback. We don't even know who it is. <laughs> And when right. we decide who it is, we're going to be disappointed. Like, it's not like, oh, Teddy's that... there. Everyone moves up. or yeah. uh, Like, they both suck. <laughs> so, um, you know, it is what it is. When I look at these three, I've been hot and bothered for Cortland Sutton this whole offseason. I really think he's going to get back, get strong. And then, of course, the camp reports and some of the videos showing he doesn't look 100%. And at this timeline, I would expect him to look nearly 100%. You know, he he should. I shouldn't be able to watch and be like, I don't think he's right. I don't think he's a hundred, um, even if he's not there yet. So I am worried about Corlin Sutton. Um, I, so would you take the value on Jerry Judy around a, a little bit more than around later? Where, like, I'm the only one in this group that has Judy actually ranked ahead of Sutton. So he's the keep to me because he's going the lowest of these three, and I believe in him. Um, I would trade Sutton. I'm not going to bank on it. I, he's a great player, and then I'll, I guess I'll cut Noah Fant. But it's it's starting to be how I'm leaning as well. I mean, Noah Fant is. I get it. I get all the reasons that Fant should break out, but the and he can. 
And you guys are laughing because there was just a dynasty trade recently. Can we talk about this, please? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, I I tweeted this out too. Like so, Jason, if you've listened for a while, I acquired Mark Andrews from Jason long ago. When the trade of Mark Andrews for John Ross doesn't sound as stupid as it sounds now. Right. Correct. Right. It sounded reasonable. John Ross obviously didn't pan out. Mark Andrews did pan out, and therefore I've held that over Jason's head for many years. We had the opportunity in a very large dynasty trade recently, a rare one between the three of us, to Jason exchange Noah Fant in a deal where I, I gave him Mark Andrews. There were other players. But I just want the people out there to know, like if Noah Fant outperforms Mark Andrews. I'll die. <laughs> and so if you're rooting for the show to have all three of us on it, um, Oh it, man, that's tough. Then root know. for Mark Andrews. Then root for Mark. This isn't. I don't need to be anti Noah Fant necessarily. I just need Mark Andrews to be uh, much better than Noah Fant. Uh, that's all that matters. It also helped that like multiple Noah Fant hype pieces started to get written moments after the trade. Like they were holding them. Like the editors were like, "Hold, hold. Hey, is that trade done? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Release, the, release the deal, the uh, the hype. Yeah, but for Fant, I mean, there's there's. So many good pass catchers, and there's not an elite. Like Aaron Rodgers is not coming to town, Denver. I'm sorry. If Bridgewater's the quarterback, I would feel more excited about the potential of Fant to have an yes. every week role and a goal line role that I could trust. That's where I would get a little more excited. I mean, I just cut him in the keep trade cut, even though I traded for him because the other guys represent more upside. I, I'm going to keep Cortland Sutton still, trade Jerry Judy, and cut Noah Fant. But I will say this I mean, if, if we rewind the tape over a year Jerry Judy has been a guy I'm in love with he was he was almost a my guy last year I think the talent is off the charts so I am rising on him and opening up to the reality opening that he could heart. have I'm opening my heart <laughs> and I'm allowing myself to see who he really is right um as a person as a mm. man um but the breakout potential is definitely there for Jerry Judy he's He's wickedly Talk about talented. Booty scooting to Jerry Judy. Mm, Booty, what? That what? Really work. I, I don't under no. Well, you went with scooting instead of scooty. What did I say? You said scoot. Oh, you have to say booty scooty. Yeah, no, that's weird. Scoot your booty, no booty, no mm. booty, booty scoot. Booty. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just stay with Jerry Judy on that one. All right, I'm keeping Judy. Okay. I man, I guess I'm trading Sutton. I feel like someone out there is all in on Noah Fant though. All right, let's do a multi-position keep trade cut. All these guys are these all tied at six oh three, Brooks? Yes. So they all these, averaged out to that. These three players, when you average out their ADP, are identical. So this is this will fun. Be, this will be fun. Mike Davis at six oh three. Russell Wilson at six oh three. And Brandon Ayuk at six oh three. So uh right now Davis is our twenty second ranked running back. Wilson's our eighth ranked quarterback, and Ayuk is our thirty second. Oh, that's my fault. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's not. Say, I like this keep trade cut okay. because this is this it's is super so easy. easy for me that it's it's Brandon Ayuk, first round pick last year from the San Francisco 49ers, proved to the team that he can be that dude. And if you want to read into uh, training camp hype, Ayuk is the one. I know Debo Sam is getting little, but Ayuk is the one, that, at least that I am seeing, that is being showered in praise by the team, by the reporters of the 49ers. And Ayuk, if Ayuk takes a second-year leap, I mean, he can he can finish as a top 15 wide receiver. He is my number one. So, obviously, the number one second-year wide receiver to take the leap for everyone is CeeDee Lamb. Like, that, okay, yes. done. Um, but when you look at there's always a handful of second-year wide receivers who take that leap to fantasy you know, gold mine. And Brandon Ayuk is my number one shot after CD Lamb. He's the guy that I think has the talent, it's not the Jalen ability. Rager? Uh, I, it is not. It's not Jerry no. Judy. It, Judy would be my third. I am just not where you guys are with Ayuk. And I do love, like, I love Brandon Ayuk. It's not about Debo sympathy. It's simply about the fact he played 12 games last year. He played a lot of them without Debo, and he played a lot yes. of them without George Kittle. So I don't know whether a leap is reasonable. Um, at six oh three, if you get eighty five catches for nine thirty six and four, are you happy? 
Yeah. Which is what he did last year. Yes, 100%. So the value the the value's fine and then there's upside, right? There, there's the the second year leap potential. I just don't know what it means in an offense like that where you're going to run the ball 500 times. Um uh, in fact, uh you know, I guess they were at 464 pace last year with injuries. You're going to run the ball between 450 and 500 times. George Kittle's healthy, Debo's healthy. I just don't know what that means in terms of volume. That's all. Yeah. Um so fair. I'm a little bit lower. I do think he's the best pick here, though. I mean, I don't believe that Mike Davis is going to sustain value all year long. I think Russell Wilson, we know the story with him. Uh, I probably get more out of Russ in a trade, so I'll keep IU, trade Russ, cut Mike Davis. Yeah, that is how I see it as well. Solely, the, the, the trade and the cut is based on value. You're going to get more for Russ than you will for Mike Davis. If I was drafting, I would draft Mike Davis ahead of Russell Wilson. Um but yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna take the wide receiver in, in this round. If you look at the six six round over the last five years, you just look at the bust rate: sixty four percent bust rate for running backs, seventy percent bust rate for quarterbacks drafted in the sixth round, and a fifty nine percent for wide receivers. So odds are on the wide receiver. Uh, odds apparently are on busting. That's true. Well, it's the sixth <laughs> round for a reason. Yeah. <laughs> in that That's time, what they say about it. <laughs> in the time span when Brandon Ayuk was that guy, I mean, he was. He's a top you talk 12 about, wide receiver. Yeah, volume. You're just averaging over 11, 11 targets a game. Oh, if you game. can guarantee me that he gets it, he gets the targets, he's going to be amazing. Yeah. He's a great player. Um, and he, he impressed me a ton on the field last year. He played very, very fast um, and seemed in tune with the offense as a rookie. All right, I've got a fun one for you. The Pittsburgh Trio. Mm, I disagree. I have a not fun one for Thank you. Thank you. Honestly, this is <laughs> this is almost in the same Denver boat, the way that nobody's ADP is high because everybody is confused about who to go with. Deontay Johnson is going in the late fifth round. My goodness, I love that. Uh, Chase Claypool is going in the late sixth round, mid to late. And Juju is going in the mid to late seventh round. Um, I'll, I'll give you mine and then I'll get out of the way. I'm, I'm going to keep Deontay. Um, I'm going to go ahead and trade Claypool and I'm going to cut Juju for fun. <laughs> yeah, it just makes you happy. It does. <laughs> oh, poor Brings Juju. me joy. Uh, but no, I think Deontay is the, what I saw in the field last year, mixed with the targets, mixed with the age of Big Ben, how Big Ben tends to trust certain players. Um, even when they were all out on the field, I mean, he trusted Deontay the most. So, I believe that he has a guaranteed floor that the other guys don't have. Yeah, I, I, it's tough for me between Deontay and Chase Claypool. If this is full PPR, I'm on Deontay because I do think he's going to be peppered with targets. The valuable targets, I think the 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 physical talent upside, the the league winning pick is more towards Chase Claypool. We saw his nose for the end zone. We saw how they used <clears throat> we used they used him in the red zone. He has deep ability. He can take a, a, a screen as well. I mean, he he was also highly targeted uh, on his routes. He was targeted on 23% of his routes, which was 14th among all wide receivers, number one in rookies, even over Justin Jefferson. Um, so you, you're talking a lot of these. I mean, we've talked three keep trade cuts in a row with these second-year mm -hmm. wide receiver breakout potentials. Um but I I do think I'm going to end up going with the volume of Deontay Johnson, go with the first read, going with what we've seen from Big Ben lately, which is I got the ball in my hands and now I don't. Yeah, and, and I, that's Deontay. I have no problem with that, but you, Jason, you're, Ayuk is your number two second-year breakout player. Chase Claypool is, it, is the guy for me behind CeeDee Lamb. It, remember, Chase Claypool – is you saw the production, but six four, almost two hundred and forty pounds, and has elite athleticism. Like you're talking, Chase Claypool, and I, I, I highlighted a, a while back uh, over the off season. I mean, the, the amount of rookies who have hit that ten touchdown mark, it's it's just hit after hit after hit after hit. And if Chase Claypool, uh, if Chase Claypool can hit that second year breakout and be even better than he was his upside to me is enormous like Deontay Johnson is a great pick where he's going I've 
I don't know why people are fading Deontay Johnson. And I get, yeah, Big Ben's older. He looked bad last year, except, you know, the, all of their wide receivers were, were very fantasy relevant last year. And the that narrative that I went to of Big Ben's arm may not have been ready to play last year. And that's been the talk over the over camp and off seasons. Big Ben is saying, "My arm wasn't ready to go, and I'm I'm back." You know, I'm uh, I. It is more healed this year than it was last year, where he talked about his rehab, where he was just throwing all the time. I'm like, you're already getting into arm fatigue heading into the season. So Chase Claypool to me can take a a DK Metcalf jump up, where to me Deontay Johnson can't do that like he'll be he'll be solid for your team he'll be an excellent wide receiver too but he's not going to make that type of a jump you know last year despite the noodle arm pittsburgh wide receivers combined were the second most fantasy yeah points. exactly the juju the guy that you you that cut, all three of us are cutting right that, yes yeah we're all <laughs> cutting and andy did it with a smile on his face <laughs> knowing that Juju was a top 20 wide receiver last year. Yeah, I, even when I made my comment about the better floor for Deontay, which I still believe, like the floor for Juju is pretty great. I yes. mean, he came back to the team on purpose on a, a, a you know, a one-year deal and you know, when Big Ben's been the quarterback, this has been 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 consecutive years where the combined fantasy points amongst wide receivers is top 5. Yes. So the points will be there. But they're, you know, it's like last year. Like they were there yet last year, number two overall. But Claypool was hard to predict when to start him, um, especially over the back half. Drop problems with Deontay, and then Juju was just kind of pathetic in terms of big games. Yeah, it, it is funny how fully disrespected Juju is here. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he's played four years in the league. He's been the wide receiver sixteen, the wide receiver nine. Got injured in twenty nineteen. And then the wide receiver 18 last season. So he's pretty much always been really solid for fantasy. I think solid the, is what people didn't want. Right. People, people wanted, wanted yeah. the giant Antonio Brown breakout. It didn't happen. And now we are filled with hatred. <laughs> and and, and we should not be. It's just yeah. funny to think that you can, based on this keep trade cut today, like let's say you go, you know, you're running back heavy to start a draft. Maybe you end up with uh, Kittle or Waller. Like, Fifth and sixth round, you could end up with Deontay Ayuk. Yep. And be this why we're RB heavy at the beginning, right? Could now. be completely fine at wide receiver with those two guys. Like I would not feel uncomfortable if I'm strong everywhere else running those two guys out there. Agreed. All right. Um one more. Fifth round wide receivers. Adam Thielen, Cooper Cup, Kenny Galladay. Basically all going at the exact same spot. I will take Deontay Johnson, please. <laughs> yeah, seriously, not me. Right? Not me. Not I. All right, well then let's Not you, huh? No. You kick it off. I will take Cooper Cup. Uh I think Cooper Cup is one, great friend of the show. Two, um an excellent wide receiver. With the injury to Cam Akers and the arrival of Matthew Stafford, I think they're going to be throwing the ball more. Um and I think they're going to be able to throw the ball downfield more. Uh they're going to have more plays that are unscripted, uh, moving out of the pocket, moving around the pocket, things that Jared Goff couldn't do. And I, I've talked about in the past how, depending on what day of the week it is, it's like, am I a Robert Woods guy or a Cooper Cup guy? I am really, really back and forth. Well, Cooper Cup sitting here in the middle of the fifth round is a really good value. We know the ceiling. We know that he you know, has the upside in this offense to be a top 10 wide receiver. We've seen it before. He was the Number wide four. receiver four two years ago, and he really disappointed last year. But so did Jared Goff. So did the offense for the most part. And to me, I think taking a shot at a bounce back for a uh, cup with an improved quarterback, uh, a need to throw the ball more. I I, I so like Cooper Cup quite you're a gonna bit. You're going to keep Cup. Keep Cup. And then you're going to trade – Galladay to Mike. All right. Okay. And, and that would necessitate me cutting Adam Thielen. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna keep Kenny Galladay here. Oh. Uh, the the pure alpha number one guarantee okay. on the team. I didn't. You know, to speak to Cooper Cup, I love the player, 
But I didn't think last year could happen to Cooper Cup. I didn't think that in a Sean McVay offense where you play 15 games that you could finish outside the top 24 at the wide receiver position. I didn't think that was possible. And so – Where did uh, he finish? 27. Okay. Um, and so, yeah, I didn't think that a three-touchdown season was possible from Cooper Cup. So knowing that the range of outcomes is a little bit more extreme than I thought, I will go with Kenny Galladay, who I think if he's on the field um, – just provides a little bit more upside. So I'll keep him. I'll trade. I guess I'm trading Cup to Jason, and then Thielen will be my cut. And I'm I'm still keeping Kenny Galladay, despite the re, the the reports out in New York are not great right now on the offense, and in particular the the quote I I saw was that Kenny Galladay is not standing out, which is that's up, up, like upsetting for a team to give uh, a wide receiver that much money and not have him immediately make a stamp on the out there at training camp but there's still he, did you hear the report no i did not he's had a really big weight around one of his legs his mm. daniel jones was hanging, ah, he's hanging dragging him around him, which makes it difficult to stand out yeah i i understand that but i'm go, it's pure target volume where it if kenny galladay is anything close to what the new york giants believe he should be he's going to see just a, he'll see way more targets than these other guys. The the touchdown upside probably still lies with Cooper Cup and Adam Thielen, but I'm going to buy into Kenny Galladay being the wide having the talent that we saw in Detroit magnified by a, a surplus of targets from New York. And Are you willing to give Thielen the respect of trading him instead of cutting him, and then you can cut Cooper Cup? Just, no. Just out of, okay. No, I, I will not. Sorry, Adam Thielen. The NFL is a young man's game. You know the business. You see uh, BC Johnson is out for the year? Oh, yeah. is he? Yeah, yeah. and they just tore, they just signed ACL. Didi. Yeah, they, they did. They signed Didi and um, you know Irv Smith. There's been some stories about him. Like It's interesting the other There's pass also catchers. no quarterback right now in Minnesota. Well, yeah, there will be. But there yeah, will be, but – uh, training camp. There heard, is no people. You, there's one, and he's been impressing. They said. I remember Browning. I don't remember what his last did name you is. You see, the Dalvin Cook has been taking some quarterback snaps. Oh, oh no, that's, that's where they are with the COVID protocol. Zimmer up in is Minnesota. so upset. He's so upset. All right. Um, want to thank Pristine Auction, great friends of the show. There's a Justin Jefferson signed jersey up there right now for sixty-seven bucks. Ends on Tuesday night. There's a Josh. Allen signed jersey up there for $74. That's on Tuesday night, too. But there's hundreds of daily auctions. Your favorite players, you can check them out at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit. We're going to do some mid-round madness on tomorrow's episode because guess what? There's another episode tomorrow. So exciting. I bet you we'll have no more news because it's happening every day. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.